changing and then talking to the Lord to, to bring about that change in, in his life. So, somebody else. to decide praying about that and just uh, uh, whether and she did have that so um, yeah well just so you know yes I, I had one down too um, and it probably was leaving a church without another appointment one time sometimes I left when I had another assignment but uh, I left the church uh, without another appointment and the process to get through that well a lot of prayer support of Connie and sensing God's leading because it was actually a four year journey and um, you know all that and it was really remaining faithful because I had some uh, interim assignments, I had some part time assignments and we, uh, we both ended up working out in Colonial Park for a while because all of a sudden we were up at church camp and um, we were done at our last part-time assignment. So we both had to come down for an interview. If you, I don't know if any of you remember Burrell's press clipping service or heard of it, but it was out in Colonial Park. So we went to work. Uh, the Lord then did bring a part-time church along and we did that in addition. And then eventually Marysville came calling and uh, yeah, the rest was there, but that was the process there. Fred. When I found out God's way is better than my way. Okay. When you found out that God's way is better than my way. So, uh, and uh, uh, then it says, on personal reflection, what decision is currently troubling you? Take time to put that before God as you begin this study. Um, you don't necessarily need to share that. That's up to, to you, but it was something maybe, you know, we each have those things and sometimes they are between us and God. Sometimes we do share them with a few others, things like that. So, uh, uh, so we do. So, um, we know that Psalm 119, as I had told you that first uh, time we were together, longest psalm, longest chapter of any in, in the entire um, uh, Bible, 176 verses as it reflects on God's law and commandments and the teaching in his word. We're just going to look at uh, uh, verses 97 to 108. Uh, do I have a volunteer to read 97 through 104 and another for 105 to 108? Of those uh, there, and then also 
does say word. I mean, we think about the Bible, but yeah, he does use the, uh, the word word or words uh, there as well. And so uh, that's why I said when you go through, now a lot of these are repeated, but yeah, he uses quite a few different uh, words or phrases for his word. And, uh, and as you go through, you see this, you see a lot of them repeated that way. Number two, which of, which of these do you identify with from your own experience of studying Scripture? You know, maybe some of them don't connect quite as uh, significantly, but maybe there's one or two that uh, you do. Anybody? Um,
word stay with us. Many times when we're in that setting, it's something that stays with us that we were able to use um, in that way. Now, there's uh, an interesting thing as I thought about this, something that uh, I remember you know, back in my college days, I had to take a course on apologetics. Now, of course, that sounds like apology. And we're not apologizing for our faith. But what it really means is it's the defense of the faith. And that's what we need to be. We need to be good apologists. Not that we're apologizing for, for the Lord or what we're doing, but that we can defend the faith. Because we know plenty of people don't believe in God. Plenty of people don't believe certain things about him which are true and all that is there. And so, uh, so yeah, it is something that's important for us to uh, to look at and realize that uh, we can do it. And sometimes we may not even know it, but uh, but just at least making that attempt when someone is uh, trying to speak against the Lord, uh, against our faith, uh, is some measure. Understanding to that of his teachers and of the elders. Right? I like it when I know more and I'm not understanding than my teacher does. <laughs> yes, well, that, yeah, that could be a good thing. described it in the, the, this passage in my Bible, it said that even an uneducated person can have the wisdom of God that they can put into practice and use. Okay. That's, uh, yeah, very good. And, and the other thing I found out, because I was looking at this, of course, teachers, and when we think of elders, thinking of, you know, but you have to remember, we're in the Old Testament. So, um, in the New Testament, we get elders and deacons and all that. First, I'm thinking that, but as I looked at a couple other different versions of that, uh, it, it often talks about the aged, meaning how certainly in that culture, and many cultures, they look to the wisdom of the elders, meaning the older individuals in their family, in their group, whatever it may be. And, uh, and once again, yes, God has blessed them, and many times we're benefit we benefit from all of that, but the fact is, we can go there too, and we can uh, um, do that. God's word is what is necessary for each of us to grow in our faith. Does he use teachers? Does he use elders, those who have been Christians for a, a long time? Certainly he does. He, he, he uses the, those individuals, but, it's, uh, but he also speaks to us as we're willing to spend time in the Word. It's the importance of spending time um, with the Bible. And I think that's really a key to these sessions and part of what we're doing here. Yes, we talked a lot about the Bible in those first sessions and into the second, but this is to get 
get us there. That is God's word and you. That we take that time to do that because, you know, we're all looking at it, we're all interpreting it. But I look at a passage and Fred will look at that same passage and, um, and Audrey may look at that same passage and everybody, and we may come up at a little different place. And it doesn't mean any of us are looking at it wrongly. It's just where we are and how God's speaking to us at that point. And so that's one of the important things uh, that hopefully you can take out of this, that uh, even though we're doing this now and it gives us a chance to do it in a more um, you know, uh, guided way, the fact is we can each do this, but we need to be spending the time Number six, how has God's word shaped and formed you? Church membership was um, uh, a lot more serious deal. You know, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it isn't still serious for people to do, but it was very, uh, usually for the youth, particularly, there was a whole thing. I know the conference had a thing out, and it was like weeks. It wasn't just one or two sessions. Oh, was it? Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. no. two years. Uh, oh, 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 okay. Oh, we're going back to... <laughs> To Dr. Lefebvre, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a community every Saturday, 
Oh my gosh. Well, that, yeah, I, I do know have some friends that are a co worker. She had to get her kids, now they're Catholic, but they had to get them through, and that was, I think that was pretty much a two year deal. They had certain things they had to complete over the two years besides sessions, but well, okay, then that's even more serious than I'm thinking when I was. What? The books that we used were in Lutheran. Oh, okay. They were Church of God. They were Lutheran. Yes. To, to get you there. Okay. Well, that, uh, uh, yeah, that would be. But I know when I was pastoring, yeah, we had books that you, you could do something for adults, but for the, for the youth or children, that was something that the conference had put out. And it was probably a six or eight session kind of a thing. So it was something where you, you did. So those were other ways. Okay, I have I have pointing fingers, and I see yes, Steph. Um, I think it helped me growing up in the church here, and having to and learning like all the stuff in Sunday school and all the Bible stories and all that. For me, once I understood the Bible and started read, you know, got into reading it, it was more on how to relate to Him on a personal level. Because when I was a kid, I always thought that God was up there. And the pastor was preaching to God, and he was in heaven. And I, until I like started to go to camp, and got more into what the Bible le stories were listening. Like it was, it wasn't about knowing the ark and something that he brought down here. It was like more of a personal relationship. Okay. Yeah. I think of the young kids learning, uh, like in the Holy Hangout, when we first started it. How many children never heard? any of the Bible stories. And once they found out that they can, they were more interested in learning more. And I hope and pray that as they get older, those are the things they'll remember as the wonderful <laughs> things that God created and did. Well, I think, obviously, when children come in, whether, whether they haven't, particularly if they don't have much encouragement, either from home, because uh, they were dropped off, um, you know, or something like that, uh, the fact is, see that hunger, like you said, once they begin to understand some of the, the stories from there, they want to learn more uh, and, and things. And I, and I don't remember who it was, but I know back when I was here, there was a, uh, a young man or something, and he had come. His parents did not come, but I, and I, I can't remember, but he kept coming, and I, I don't know where he is today. I'm trusting he's walking with the Lord, but the fact was he, he came and he learned and he grew in his faith uh, and he kept walking with him at least through that time. I mean, many times people go, we don't know where they are, but we trust that that goes with them and things. So, uh, you know where he was. Yeah, yeah, he just was from the community and that's obviously what we look to do. It's important to develop those who have that support system, but also those who don't. In our community last year with the Holy Hangout for the kids, we got into a discussion of what Easter was. And every kid in the neighborhood said, that's the Easter Bunny. And Mark introduced them to Jesus' death on the cross. And all of a sudden, we got a couple lights up there. Mm -hmm. It's all about introducing the Bible to them mm -hmm. the best way we can. Yeah. And that's what offering the gift of childhood. Well, I was going to say, when was saying about the excitement of them learning a story or two, I was thinking, look at what we see. Now I know it's, you know, it's filmed there, but the kids are looking at the stuff, but then you see them with the booklet that, you know, is talking about the story uh, from Christ's birth in their language and that kind of thing, and someone's there showing them this and, and trying to do, yeah, it, it's also being a blessing to them, but it's not just in a physical way that they can have something they couldn't get otherwise. But more importantly, spiritually. So, so yeah. We went to when they had speakers in to the group thing, and one of the girls was from Russia or Italy or something. They got the box and told her story, and it is sad, but it is exciting because she then was able to introduce her mother. Her mother became a Christian as well, but the father was not.
Give an example of a situation in which you've experienced this.
Number nine, how does God's word give us life in the midst of our suffering?
first of next year. for coming.